let's talk about how you can not only get lean, but stay lean for as long as you'd like. So I'd really cracked the code for myself uh, for staying lean. It's pretty, pretty easy for me right now. It's almost effortless, which I know that might sound weird to you right now if you're out of shape and getting lean is really a challenge for you. But I promise you, if you watch through this video, you'll have an exact idea of what you need to do to get lean and then how you can realistically stay lean, stay chiseled, and have like that six pack year round, okay? So let's get started right away. This is what we're gonna discuss. So first we're gonna talk about diet. So what you should or shouldn't be eating to stay chiseled, how that works and everything, carnivore, vegan, like that type of stuff. We're gonna cover it all. We're also gonna go over integration and lifestyle. So what I mean by this is actually how you can integrate fitness into your life because a lot of people are very, very busy. I'm sure you're one of those people and you just don't have time to like track every gram of rice. You don't have time to, you know, spend 14 hours a week in the gym or whatever it is. And you still want to be able to go out and have a social life and have fun without having to be a slave to the gym. So that's what we're going to cover in that section. And then lastly, I'm going to cover the key mindsets you really need to you know, keep at the top of your brain so that you can stay lean, push through those times where it gets hard, and and ultimately, like, have that physique that you've always wanted. All right, so let's get straight into it with my experience. So, as I may have said earlier, you know, I've been shredded, I've been lean for a very long time. I've had a six-pack year-round for probably the last five years, if not more, and it's came easily for me using the systems I'm gonna to explain to you in this video. And some new things I've discovered over the past nine months have allowed me to get even leaner than I ever have before. So I know what I'm doing. I've also coached guys, helped them get lean and stay lean. So I have experience with this stuff. It works, just hear me out, follow the video, and I promise you there's gonna be some new advice in here you probably haven't heard and it will change your life if you implement it. You will be able to stay lean pretty easily. You know, getting lean is a little bit harder than staying lean. Once you can get lean, staying there is pretty easy. It's getting there, which can be a little bit tough at some times, but that's what we're gonna go over in this video, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right in with the diet. So what diet should you be choosing? Should you be doing carnivore, vegan, meal plans? Is, there, is he gonna recommend me meal plans? Should I have a diet where I eat no sugar? Maybe a diet where I eat a ton of sugar? Should I eat processed foods? Should I not eat processed foods? This stuff can be overwhelming. It's like juice cleanses or not juice cleanses. Like there's so much information out there and it can all be misleading. And the truth is like with meal plans is meal plans are never gonna work for anybody because they're unrealistic. Sure, you can stick to them for some period of time for three months or something like this. But at some point you're gonna break on a meal plan because you have these structured meals that you're supposed to be eating every day. It's never gonna fit into your social life. What about when you go to a party or you have, uh, you go to a family member's house and they have cake or whatever, or it's your birthday. You can never stick to a meal plan perfectly. So that's not an option. Carnivore, too extreme. Vegan, too extreme. No sugar, unrealistic for most people. So the truth is there is no one size fits all diet, but I'll give you what has worked best for me and how you can implement it. So this is what I meant with the meal plan thing. There is no one size fits all diet. There is no diet that's gonna work perfectly for you and for me and for the guy next door. But there are some frameworks, general frameworks you can follow, which will help you stay lean, which will help you get lean. And I'm gonna give you what's worked best for me and then how you can apply that to yourself. All right, so let's jump right into it. So here's the diet I recommend for staying shredded year round. All right, so the first thing you need to do, and this plays into the integration lifestyle section, is intermittent fasting. So I'm sure you've heard of it before. If not, intermittent fasting is just where you don't eat for certain periods of the day. So the way I like to structure this, and I think the easiest way to structure this, is to just push your first meal of the day back as far as you can and set a time where you're going to stop eating. So I think if you stop eating around 8, 8 p.m., let's say you fall asleep 11, 12, and you stop eating at 8, that's great. And then in that case, you'd want to start eating as far back as you can. So I eat around one or two every day between those two hours. And that's worked really great for me. But when you're starting, it can be a little bit difficult. So first, push it back. 
push your breakfast back to like 11 if you can, and then 12, and then one, and then two. And then once you do that, you'll have a nice intermittent fasting window. And this just helps with not only staying lean, but getting lean as well. Because you're, you're not only confining the amount of time you have to eat calories, but outside of those times where you've burned all your calories, you're fasted for like 12 hours at this point, your body's gonna start using fat for fuel and you're gonna get lean. So that's why intermittent fasting is so great. Next part of diet is you, sh you can't realistically track calories all the time. Like some people can, and that's great. But what I mean by tracking calories is like you, get, you have a, a gram scale and you weigh every gram of everything you eat. That's unrealistic, okay? No one can do that. However, a more realistic way you can track your calories is you just, you know, you develop an eyeball for the amount of calories you're eating. Maybe you track them for a week. You develop an eyeball for the amount of calories you're eating. And then you just stay disciplined on that. And once you have your set calories, you track your weight. And when I say pictures here, what I mean is you look at yourself in the mirror and you can tell, am I getting a little bit more puffy? Okay, I simply drop the calories by like 200. And tracking weight is really powerful because this is how you can see if you're gaining or losing weight on a consistent basis. So if you're not gonna track calories in this uh, super autistically detailed way, then you must track your weight. Okay, at least once per week you should track your weight. Because this way you can see if I'm gaining weight, if I'm gaining weight for two, three weeks in a row, okay, I need to look at my calories, adjust it by like 200, you can kind of eyeball it. And what I recommend for most people, if you haven't tracked calories before, is you track them for a week. Track them for a week, every detail. Then once you do that, you're done. Now you have an eyeball for it. Now you know how many calories you're supposed to eat. You can roughly eat the same things and then just track your weight. If you're not losing weight, drop the calories. You know what I mean? It's pretty simple, okay? And for guys who are just starting out and you're trying to get lean, the easiest tip I'll give you for getting your mac or your calories and even your macros too is just multiply your goal body weight. So let's say you're 200 pounds, you want to get to a, to 180, trying to get leaner. Multiply 180, your goal body weight, by 13, and that is the amount of calories you want to be eating. So track that, eat roughly that amount of calories, track your weight, see how you're losing weight. And over time, if you do this, you will get leaner, okay? Now, next piece of the diet. This has to do with like the foods you're actually eating. And that's really these three points here. You wanna eat like our ancestors. So this means no processed foods. Think about 200, 500 years ago, what our ancestors were eating. Those are the foods you wanna eat. So something like beef, fish, eggs, nuts. It's like these one ingredient foods. Fruit, nothing like bread, pasta, uh, you know, jelly, something like that. I use this example of peanut butter all the time because you can get regular peanut butter which is filled with a bunch of nonsense stuff in it or you can get the natural peanut butter which if you look on the back of it, the only ingredients in there is peanuts and salt. So you're gonna be mindful of this stuff. Get processed foods out of your diet check the ingredient list on things, eat things that have very, very little ingredients, things that our ancestors would eat, okay? So avoid all of the Doritos, chips, all that type of stuff. Now, we wanna keep this diet realistic at the same time. So you have to kind of ease yourself into that and get used to that and start embodying this diet that you're gonna start you know, eating like, and that can take some time and that's okay. Now, the other rule I like to use is like the 80-20 rule, which is Pareto's principle. And basically, as long as you're eating 80% of healthy foods, like 80% of your diet is coming from the best stuff you can eat, like eggs, red meat, that type of stuff, the other 20% won't matter as much. So you can use this rule if you have a sweet tooth and you really want to eat sweets. You can have like the last 20% of your calories in the day, you can eat something like ice cream bar or... Uh, chocolate bar, whatever it is that you want, like Kit Kat, whatever you want. I personally don't do this because I'm a bit of a health nerd, but it is something you can get away with, okay? And a good substitute if you want something sweet that's not unhealthy is fruit, or you can eat uh, a dark chocolate, like 75% or higher of the dark to sugar ratio or whatever the ratio is, right? Okay, so that's a good trick for your diet too. Next, 
be realistic. So like I was saying, it shouldn't feel constrictive. It shouldn't feel like a diet plan. The key here is you understand what the goal of diet is, which I said is like eating like our ancestors. You understand your calories and then you start here. And it's just about slowly transitioning over time into that diet and making it a part of just who you are. Like for me, it's so easy for me to stay lean all the time because I'm just used to eating this way. This is just how I eat. I don't go get fast food. I don't eat ice cream. Like I don't eat any of this stuff. And it's not like I don't enjoy my diet because I enjoy my diet a lot. It's just, that's just how I eat. That's just who I am. I've been working on this stuff for years. Being healthy and being lean is part of who I am. And that's why it's so easy for me to stay year round, especially like intermittent fasting makes it so easy because you get this period of the day guaranteed, even if you're bulking, where you're going to be burning fat. So that's why I love intermittent fasting so much. All right, but let's go on. Let's move on to the next section, which is going to be integrating all this fitness stuff into your lifestyle. And this is really difficult for a lot of people, especially if you're someone who travels a lot, like a traveling professional you're gonna have a hard time sticking to a consistent schedule and integrating everything into your lifestyle. And you know, I'm gonna talk about that right now. So in order for you to get lean and stay lean, fitness must be integrated smoothly into who you are. So if you wanna get lean and you wanna stay lean forever, you must develop this relationship with fitness where it's part of who you are. It's a core, tenant of who you are and this is how i believe it should be especially if you're a man fitness is so important being in good shape is so so important and you must have that as a pillar in your life and a pillar of who you are and once you can do that once you can really you know put it into your identity then it becomes easy to stick to because when you start acting like that guy who cheats on his diet it's gonna feel off it's gonna feel like that's just not you you know what i mean okay so here's some tips I have for you for integrating fitness into your lifestyle. You need to develop rules for eating out, for drinking, if you're someone who drinks, and for like hanging out with your family. So my rule is when I'm out with my family or I'm at like a family event, someone's having a birthday party, whatever, I eat how I usually do. So I don't eat sweets or anything like that. But if someone, you know, if it's a social thing and I'm with someone and they're like, oh, I wanna go get ice cream or whatever, then I'll eat them with it, okay? I'll eat something bad. So my rule is I only eat like sweet stuff when I'm with someone else. I never ever do it by myself because if you do it by yourself, that ain't good, that ain't good. But if you're, you know, if you're on like baked a pie and she really wants you to try it, you're not gonna say no to that, right? Say yes, eat the pie, it's fine. This is about creating something realistic, not something that's like autistic, like all these other fitness guys preach, okay? And then you need to develop rules for eating out. So going to restaurants, going out to eat, things like this. Because uh, who wants fitness to hold them back from doing something like that? Nobody, right? The whole point of getting an aesthetic physique is so you can enjoy it, right? So you want to still be able to go out and eat out. Now I have some rules for eating out, how to make it easy for yourself. And this goes hand in hand with drinking. So for drinking, when you want to drink either usually a liquor, hard liquor. So you can also drink vodka is a good one, tequila. Basically vodka and tequila are good because they're low calories, especially tequila. If you told me like there's one alcoholic drink that's best for staying lean, it would be tequila. And then all you do is just mix it. I mean, you can drink it straight up or you can have it as like a, a vodka soda, something like that. And the reason for this is because it's low calorie you know, they're pretty strong drinks, so they can, you know, give you a nice buzz if you want. But you have to set these rules for yourself. So pick the drinks you're going to have. Make sure they're like low calorie ones. Only only have like two, three drinks and don't do it often, right? Think of it as like, an, do it on a special occasion is the point I'm trying to make. Don't do it casually all the time. And set clear boundaries for yourself with drinking. I personally don't drink at all. But, you know, you can still stay lean and drink. You just have to set boundaries with it. Next rules for eating out don't eat bread when the waiter brings it to you and don't get appetizers and don't get dessert now it sounds like oh that sounds shit but if you want to stay lean and go out to eat you can still enjoy a bunch by getting whatever entree you want so you can stay lean you can stay super shredded 
like how I have for the past five years. Just don't don't get the appetizer. Pick whatever entree you want. Pick something fulfilling, something that's going to satisfy you, and stick to that. Because the issue is, you eat the bread, you eat the appetizer. That's already like seven hundred calories, five hundred calories. Then if you eat the entree, then you're like you know that could be a thousand calories. You're at seventeen hundred. Then you eat the chocolate cake plus five hundred. Now you're at twenty two hundred calories. You're, you're over your limit for the day, most likely, if you ate earlier. So it's so easy to go over the limit when you're eating out. You need to develop systems for yourself on how to do this. And I found what works best is you just, you skip the bread, you skip the appetizers, you know, have like a, a club soda instead, which will keep you filled up. And then you have whatever app or whatever entree you want, maybe like a big 14 ounce, 16 ounce ribeye with baked potato. That's an awesome meal you can still enjoy. You have that, and then you know you skip dessert. If you want something sweet, go home, eat a chocolate bar. They're like 150 calories instead of eating that cake or whatever it is, which is gonna fill you up with like four or 500 calories in it, which, is a, which can be the difference between you staying lean or gaining the weight, okay? So keep that stuff in mind when you're going out to eat. Next, uh, lift three times a week. This is what I preach on this channel, and if you're trying to stay lean, most of it comes from the diet, but as far as integrating fitness into your lifestyle, go three days a week. You don't need to go any more than that. Lift weight. Each session should be around an hour. If you do that, you're going to see great results. You don't need any more than that. I've actually seen better results lifting three times a week for one hour each than when I was lifting six days a week, okay? And I don't even do full body either. Now, on top of that, I also do... Uh, training stuff so like martial arts jujitsu boxing that type of stuff but that's separate you don't need it to have the aesthetic physique to have that lean chiseled body so lift three times a week that'll help you integrate everything into your lifestyle as i was talking about earlier intermittent fasting and the reason this is so great is because you can do it anywhere because you're not eating right anybody cannot eat no matter if you're traveling no matter how busy you are you literally just don't eat so that's an easy one and then Next one, walks daily. So this is really, really great for not only getting lean, but staying lean and making it something that's so simple and so easy. Hit 10,000 steps a day, hit 14,000 steps a day. If you do this, you're gonna stay lean. You're gonna be you're gonna be like shredding off body fat. I promise you, like if you actually track your steps and you're doing like 10,000 steps and you're fasting, you're gonna get lean really, really quick. You're gonna shred off body fat. And this is, like a key point of how I've been able to stay so lean is because I always go for long walks every day. And you need to integrate it, like I said, integrate it into your lifestyle. And the easiest way I found to do this is I just go for a walk after every time I eat. I eat and it helps, and then I go for a long walk and it helps with my digestion as well for my gut health and I just feel great. So I've built that habit for myself. And I also have a dog too, which helps. I can walk my dog, right? But just get into the habit of going for long walks, however you need to do it, every day. I promise you'll become a fat-burning machine, okay? And the next one is just make it part of who you are, which I'll get into more right now with the mindsets. All right, so except this first. Getting lean, it can be difficult. It's simple, it's straightforward. Eat in a calorie deficit, move around a little bit more. It's simple, but it can be difficult. However, staying lean is much, much easier and getting lean because you already have the systems locked in you just have to maintain them. so remember that it's harder right now but it will be easier i promise you that all right and here's some key mindsets you need in order to not only get lean but locking in and staying lean staying lean forever right nobody wants to just get lean and then leave it at that nobody wants that okay so first one you need to start viewing yourself as the fitness guy and i don't mean as the personal trainer or as the guy who works out all the time. I mean, view yourself as the guy who's in shape and who takes care of his body, the healthy guy. And you need to adopt this frame for yourself because then you can make the excuse of, I need to go to the gym to do this and people will just accept it, right? I need to go to the gym today or I won't eat that because I am that guy now. I'm the guy who's conscious of his health, who's conscious of you know, staying lean. So you need to view yourself in this way. First, if you get an out of shape guy who views himself as out of shape, he's gonna take actions that cause him to continue to view himself as out of shape. And what I mean by that 
is he's going to eat badly. He's going to binge eat. Versus if you're the fat guy who sees himself as in shape, he's going to take actions to back up him being in shape. So he's going to go to the gym. He's going to stay consistent. He's going to eat the right foods. And that's why this mindset is so powerful. So you need to start viewing yourself as the fitness guy. Next, this is a really important one. Remember why you want it. So I believe that becoming the best version of yourself and becoming a true masculine figure of your household, of your last name, a key, key part of this is having a lean muscular physique. It is. Remember that. Remember why you want it. Why do you want the aesthetic physique? So you can get the girl, so you can be respected, so you can you know, ha have more confidence in yourself. Okay, so remember why you want it when things get hard, and that will help to push you through. Next one, accept it will be difficult, okay? Getting lean, lean can be hard, okay? Using the systems I've given you guys, it should be as easily, should be done as easily as possible. But there will be times where you're hungry, where it will get difficult. You need to accept that, especially if you're trying to get really, really lean and get a six pack. Accept it will be difficult at times. Okay, that's a good mindset. And then there's one more point I want to leave you with. And this one's in red because this is some deep stuff. And you probably shouldn't think about it often because it will mess with your head. But if you're one of those guys who's been struggling to get lean for a while, or maybe you got lean and then you gave up on it and you got out of shape again, think about what it will be like if you never get there. And think about all of the things you're missing out on. Think about you and your current state with a girl that you get, and then a guy's walking past with a shirt off, with chiseled feet, and she can't help but look over there because that's not you, because you don't have that, and maybe that's what she wants. Maybe, you know, you won't have enough energy to, you know, pursue your business and pursue your goals, and because of your lack of discipline in the gym, you have a lack of discipline in your business, and you're stuck in this rat race for your entire life. And these are some extreme examples, but Really take some time to think about it. Think about it, what it would be like if you never get there. Think about it, remember it, accept it, then move on. Don't spend too much time thinking about this stuff where you can get caught in a negative cycle. But these are the key mindsets for getting lean and staying lean. Remember guys, walking, really important. Intermittent fasting, really important. Integrate it into your lifestyle. It should feel, it should have some resistance, but it should be relatively easy, especially with your diet. If you do all these things, you will not only be able to get lean as hell, you'll be able to stay lean forever. And this is exactly how I did it. Now that's it for this video, guys. Take care. Peace out.